Welcome to the Audio Description Network Alliance. I'm your guest host, Satana Howery, sitting in for Roy Samuelson, who no doubt is out in the world doing amazing things. He's selling salt to snails because he could do it. So today, I want to welcome to the podcast voice actor and on-camera talent, Reina Amaya. Am I saying that right? I didn't even ask you. Oh my gosh. Can you record that and send it to me so I can put it on my website? Yeah. Introducing <laughs> Raina Amaya is right. Thank you. Because, you know, people get my name wrong all the time. <laughs> okay. Give me the, the worst interpretation of your name. Uh, I am I'll not a fan of Satana, Sultana, Ooh. Satuana. <gasps> Satuana I, tree, Satuana, <laughs> you know, I'm like, really? <laughs> okay, so you're reversing the U and the A. And it's, it's I just tell people, Satana rhymes with Madonna, it works. That's perfect. M uh, mine is Renya because my name is spelled R-E-Y-N-A. And oh, I think they right. switched the Y and the N and the, it's it's Renya. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's, that's not a name, but okay. <laughs> they, I knew a guide dog once whose name was Fenya. Oh, that's so adorable. Now yeah, that I like. like. Yeah, like Fenya Greek. Maybe I'll name my dog Renya and then it'll get really weird. <laughs> I, love, I love that idea. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for being here on the podcast today and uh, welcome. It was a little bit of a, a, a circuitous route to get to say welcome, but welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy to be here and to have been invited to talk about this topic, which is just dear to me. So, yay. So what do you love about audio description? I think the thing that I love the most about, well, there's two things, but the thing I like the most in my like soul heart about audio description is that it is so important when you are someone who is a person of color, a woman, for you to think of everyone who falls under the category, the human category of other. And to me, there are forgotten others in our society. And I feel like something like movies, concerts, you know, all kinds of things, everything that everybody loves to enjoy, it's important to make that accessible to all the humans. And that is the thing I love the most about audio description is allowing someone who is seeing impaired, and there's a lot of varieties of what that is. This is not just blind. There are, there's so many different variations to having sight differences and allowing people to enjoy media just brings me so much joy and taking it seriously, depending, you know, what is the project? What are you trying to entail? What is the emotion and feeling of this scene and really taking that seriously? So that's interesting to me because my next question is, what's a challenge you think that you faced that you overcame in audio description? But I'm going to rephrase it and I, we can go <laughs> there too, but I'm also curious to know what's a challenge that you think is going on with audio description right now? Huh. The challenge is there's not enough people thinking about it. There's not enough people who are creating content thinking about what would it be like to enjoy this content and be someone with sight impairments. I want there to be a whole awards section for the movies for audio description, not just for the voiceover artists who are doing the audio description, but for the directors who are taking into account sound to help tell a story, to help someone understand where they are. Dialogue, the writers to help paint a scene. There's so much that could be done that would allow everyone to enjoy certain content if we took it into consideration. It's a challenge that I think is not that challenging. Right. The challenge seems to be awareness. It seems to me that's what you're saying. It's awareness, just like every other issue we have. It's awareness. Yeah. So what's the challenge that you face that you have overcome? Ooh, okay. This is interesting because this is technical. <laughs> it's less about the heartstrings. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Well, so, that's, yeah, that's fun too, though. Oh, it can be fun. It can yeah. be fun. Okay. So I, um, earlier this year, I ended up going to, I'm, I'm from California, I'm from the Bay Area, and I went home just for a visit and also for some work, and the wildfires were going on, and I did not realize that the wildfires, there are particles in the air um, yeah. that can affect your voice, and oh, I just yeah. wasn't thinking about it, 
So after I returned home, I live in England where the air is very wet and nice and, you know, moisturizes your voice and all of that. I came back and I was like, Hey, how's everybody doing? (laughs) And I was like, what my voice, something's wrong with. And it was like, Whoa. So when it came to audio description, I was really scared because I'd only been working with this company for a couple of years, but I had to tell them that I couldn't do any projects that were horror, that were really dramatic and no like sex scenes right now, because here's the truth about all of those scenes is you have to speak low and you have to speak very sensually or very like, you know, suspenseful and things like that. And when I went to my throat doctor human person and I was like, help me, they were like, no low registers for you. You have to be up. You have to be happy. So I took on comedies. I took on children's movies um, and series. And I took on things that allowed me to speak in the places where my voice needed to speak in order for me to heal. That was challenging because I like that dark, mysterious stuff also, but I had to pass based on health. Yeah. Do you have a favorite thing that you've described that you've voiced? (sighs) Oh my God. It's so hard to choose. Okay. (laughs) It is because the thing is people don't even understand what it's like for the voiceover artist to do this work. I am just supposed to do what's in the script. I am helping you with all the stuff that's in between the dialogue because you are just there to listen to the movie. You don't need me trying to run the show, but I also like to watch the movie. So sometimes if there's not a real tight deadline, I want to watch the movie Mm -hmm. um, in between me doing my work. So I recently did this movie. It's a Disney plus movie. It's called spin. And I'm allowed to say I did it now because there's all kinds of non-disclosure agreements that come with this, but I'm allowed to say it. I did spin. And it's this movie about this young Indian American who wants to be a world famous DJ. And there's color and there's action. And it's, yes, it's a children's movie. (laughs) It's like a, you know, teenager, she's in high school. But the audio description was amazing. The script was incredible. And I just, I enjoyed it. Wow. Oh, I enjoyed it so much. That's so cool because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that that one might describe where the script is not exciting. Uh, And you just it's not exciting either because one is just filling in the gaps, right? Like in a documentary, a lot of times you're just articulating the words on screen. Yeah. You know, who's speaking? Who are they interviewing now? Give me that name so I know what I'm listening to in terms of who that voice is or quick scene changes or things like that. But sometimes the writing is just, (laughs) there's a lot of time when you're like, wow, why did you write it like that? (laughs) Oh my gosh. And, and so here's the other thing is I'm, I also, I work with a lot of um, English audio description writers. Mm. So what happens with the subjectivity? Yeah. (laughs) Hello. It is not a bin. It's a trash can. And so, you know, there's so many things where, because I am, I am very American. Okay. That is where I grew up. I know America. And I think about the audience that is going to be taking in this movie. And this is an American movie. So we have to do this accurately because if you say he's in a vest, that is not the same as saying he's in a tank top. Or even depending on the movie, it's a wife beater. And people may be uncomfortable with these terms, but in order for the person to know what you're talking about, it needs to be culturally accurate. So do you think that it goes the other way as well? For example, if it's a British film, then we write it with British terminology. Ooh, okay, now we're getting into the nitty gritty. So this is interesting because I think it has to do more with who is creating the movie and who is the movie for? We have movies like Bridget Jones Diary. Now, yes, this is all mostly, I mean, you know, not even Renee, but mostly English actors. Mm -hmm. But who is the movie intended for? Now it's intended for the world, but it was definitely intended for American audiences. In addition to English audiences, which means you gotta make some decisions. Sure, interesting interesting yeah such fun 
um, <laughs> where you kind of addressed this earlier, but I'll ask it anyway. Where would you like to see audio description headed? Oh, gosh, I did address this a bit, a bit, bit, bit earlier, but you're right. There's so much it's more to slice. it. Yes. <laughs> it's a slice. I want full on accessibility awards. The talent that it takes to write an audio description script deserves to be awarded. The talent that it takes to bring that script to life as a voiceover artist needs to be rewarded. And also, who are the people taking in the content? People's Choice Awards? I think people need to judge who is doing the best audio description because there are people who have the knowledge and the experience to say, you know what, that was crap. I, you took me out of the movie. That was not it. And people to say, you know what, you made the movie. So this is really interesting to me because you were talking about Disney Plus and, you know, one of the things that I appreciate about Netflix is that it's only happened in the past couple of years or so. But now at the end of episodes, you will hear them say audio description provided by company name, written by so-and-so, voiced by so-and-so. And, -so, and right. that's a Netflix thing. But a yeah. lot of these studios are really sort of not willing to give credit where credit is due. Would you that's agree right. with that? I would agree with that. And I'm happy to say that I work for a company where I am always saying what company did the audio description, mm -hmm. who was the writer of the mm -hmm. script yeah, and who was the voiceover artist. And that's important to me yeah. because yeah. I'm in the field. Yes. Anything else you'd like to share? I mean, I guess one of the main things that I just want to bring more awareness to is that this is an art and this is also really important to humans who are living on this planet. And we need to take this more seriously. We need to pay our voiceover artists who do audio description way more, yeah. way more. We need to pay the, the, the writers way more. And I think also as an interesting challenge for people who are young and who are just thinking about getting into film, start thinking about accessibility. Start making your Marvel movies and thinking about accessibility. Think about people with seeing impairments. Think about people with hearing impairments. Start really challenging yourself to create something for everybody. That would be my biggest, biggest announcement. Excellent. Okay. It has been so great to have you. Can you tell people how they might reach you? Yes, absolutely. Um, I would say the best way to reach Raina Amaya is at my website, which is RainaAmayaVO.com. And that is R-E-Y-N-A. And then A-M-A-Y-A. VO.com. Vo. Don't forget that dot com. <laughs> I guess we don't have to do the WW anymore. That would make me very 19 or no, no, no. Oh my God. Yeah, no, right. And something. I don't even right. know. Right. It'd yes, make me 1800s, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Raina, thank you so much for being here. This was so much fun. And uh, we will uh, watch for all the stuff that you've got coming up and going on and keep us posted on what's happening. Yes, I absolutely will. Thank you so much for having me.